everybody, and welcome to the Terraform Homestead. For those of you who are new to our channel, we are an off-grid homestead out in the southern Arizona desert teaching natural building and sustainable living. This week, we have a very exciting episode for you guys. This is part two of our Hyper Adobe build. Our last episode, we took almost 200,000 pounds worth of dirt, packed them into bags, and made the shell of our future home. This week, we are getting the roof on this 280 square foot Hyper Adobe earth bag tiny home. Getting these beams up 12 feet in the air, getting a roof on, getting this thing dried in. It has been a crazy, crazy project, especially considering we're high up in the air, nothing square on this. It is such a weird, funky build, but it's a lot of fun. So with that, let's get into this build. Thank you guys for watching. All right, everybody, we are finally, 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 finally getting started on this roof build. So I'm very excited. This morning we got a delivery of our roofing lumber, our roofing sheeting, all our hurricane ties, stuff like that. I still do need to get our metal for the roof, but that will be a Tucson trip. And because there's a scrapyard that I like that is pretty inexpensive, we need to get our wood on first. So my project right now is to get these beams made. So the idea is we're gonna have 32 foot long beams going across, then our rafters, sheeting, asphalt paper, and metal. The issue is 32 foot beam is not really a thing and so we ended up getting two 20 foot and two 12 foot beams for each beam all right so hopefully this makes a little bit more sense than my explanation but you can see 12 foot board 20 foot board 20 foot board 12 foot board so there's a seam here and then we've got eight feet that overlap right there and there. Right now I just have these screwed together, uh, but we will be putting in some heavy duty bolts uh, that goes through the wood. We'll have four going through each of our posts, one on the ends and then four in the middle here. So that'll be 14 bolts um, to sandwich these two things together not super worried about it. Most of these beams are going to be supported by our bags, which is nice. The biggest majority of it is gonna be sitting on our bags. And then we just have those beams on either end to support the ends. I think this is pretty over-engineered, uh, but that's how I like to do things out here. All right, everybody, it's a late night build day. Late night, like six o'clock, I don't know, something like that. Feels like midnight, because it's winter. Now that we have our beautiful shop pretty well done, it's time to get back to it. So, what I'm doing tonight is working on our support beams, pillars. Got this flat bar, one inch steel. Basically what we're gonna be doing is I found a professional welder because my little bitty Chicago Electric Harbor Freight welder flux core toy is not going to do this. I don't trust I don't trust structural stuff to the toys. So found a professional welder that's going to be doing these for fairly inexpensive. I have to do all the prep work. So what I'm doing is we're getting these cut down to 18 inches and then basically going to be, he's gonna be welding them up into an L bracket. We're gonna be putting four holes through each of these, and then that is going to mount heavy duty bolts to our LVL beams, and then he's gonna be welding these L brackets to our steel posts. So 
that's the plan for tonight. Get all these drilled, cut, and ready for him to mess with in the morning. Okay, so I got all of our plates cut, and I got these big 3 8 inch holes drilled in, and this may make a little more sense what we're doing now. So, got some long runs of this big, big thick, heavy duty pipe, and basically we're going to cut an L shape in here, and then we have our plate sitting recessed on our pipe, so that'll actually be down here. We have our other thing, piece, creating an L bracket, and then we'll have, need another hand, a little cap over here to cover that so that'll stay all good and happy. And then basically what we're going to do is run 2x10s here and here, and then basically just run a super big heavy duty bolt through the two 2x10s, two nut and washer on each side, and yeah, that's going to be way overkill for what we need, but, you know, I want this house to last for forever, so we're going to do it right. Alrighty, so I am very excited right now. I uh, just got a message from our welder that's helping us out that our posts are welded up and ready to go. So I'm heading into Bisbee to pick them up. We got our posts all welded up. I just need to put a little bit of paint or rust sealer, rust, I don't know, the rust reformer and then paint, epoxy something or another. It's meant for metal going into concrete. And then our welder, got these all done. They're looking so good. I'm like really excited about this. And uh, yeah ready to go. a very 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 exciting day on the homestead today we're starting the roof on this guy this is something i've been nervous about but excited for for better part of nine months now but all stuff to do is to do it got our beams painted last night sealer coat on that we got our posts ready painted now i just gotta figure out how to put it all together <laughs> and get it 12 feet up in the air so got our posts and our beams ready. Now I just have to figure out how to put this stuff together. I know how to put it together. How to put this stuff together square. We're doing this backside first because I think it's going to be easier because there's more clearance and less height. My thought is I've got this laid out kind of eyeballing it, which that worked out really well for a workshop, so I'm kind of doing it again. But I think what I can do is just kind of eyeball it on this first one 
and then use this first one once it's locked into place as a reference for the second post. And then we'll run a couple string lines to get our third post in, our third beam in. Here's where we are at. Got a single uh, bolt in each of these posts and some clamps so that way I can wobble it and get it plumb as I needed. We've got our tubes and our rebar clamped up and then uh, yeah all that's left to do is to lift it. All right, we're wrapping up for today. Yeah, it's been a tough one, but we got all the beams up. So we got all three of them up. There's no, not even close to being square. We're still quite a ways out from that, but uh, called it a day because just kind of got to a point where it's just racking my brain how to figure out how to do this. So I'm gonna come at it with the fresh eyes of the morning. What's hard about this is everything's 12 feet in the air. Everything's heavy. Everything's awkward, and they're 32 feet long by 20 something feet long beams. So they keep, they're gonna bend and stuff like that. What I think I need to do is get in a center post on our loft here. So that way I can get one beam locked into place. And then that way I have a center beam on our loft that can run perpendicular to Something along those lines. I don't know. My brain is so gone <laughs> right now. Good morning, everybody. It is another beautiful Arizona winter day and heading out to the shop. I think the plan is to get a reference guide, a reference point on this building because it's a round structure that's really not even perfectly round plan is to get a center post up to get our middle beam locked in and then use that as a reference point to square up either end. And basically what I need to do here is uh, weld up a post similar to what we have on the corners here that'll mount to this beam here at the edge and come up to here. So pretty simple, just need to get some measurements. All right, so I got our additional post welded up. Okay. 
Good morning, everybody. It is day three of this Hyper Adobe Tiny Home roof build. I was able to get that beam up yesterday, nice, centered, locked into place. It's not gonna move. So now today I can get the rest of our stuff, uh, the, our Raptors put in hopefully. My thought on that is to basically cut three Raptors with the little bird's mouth angle cuts, um, all exactly the same, marked out how I want them and then I can just slot that in on the left side, right side, and center. Do that on the front and the back. And in theory, we should be square. What are you guys worried about over there? Actually, rats, because they were not mice. Yeah, they were not. Pack rats, they smell like rats. Hello, hello everybody. It is Saturday, December 17th, and very exciting. Uh, my clients are off for the rest of the year. So that means we have 13 days doing a big, big push to get the roof on a little Hyper Adobe. So we're cranking away, we're getting posts put in, we're getting more plaster put on. I'm about to get up on the roof, which is not my favorite thing. Start getting rafters put in. But uh, yeah, the goal is to have the roof totally done by the end of the year. And once we get that done, we can finish exterior plaster, hopefully also done by the end of the year. And then move on to the fun stuff, getting our windows in, getting our interior done, and moving on to another project. So fun day ahead. Good morning, everybody. We are moving right along on this Hyper Adobe build. So today we are out here. We got the crew working on getting the concrete posts set, our gabion screens remesh cut. So that way, once we get the concrete done and dried, we can put our gabions in. I'm about to get back up on the roof and start putting rafters on. Getting our rafters in, and this one was just, I think our, our beams are a little bit bowed. This one was just like, 
just like a quarter inch off. <laughs> just like maybe not even that. And so I was like, I'm not taking this down and cutting it. So I just got a strap and uh, <laughs> that worked out pretty well. Pretty proud of that. All right, we are wrapping up the day. Pretty productive day. Uh, weather was not super cooperative, but we still got a lot done. Y'all can see. Started getting our rafters up. Started getting our gabions in. So uh, we got our posts concreted to the ground and then are starting with these rock work uh, gabion cages. And basically this is really gonna help tie everything in and just add extra weight to hold these posts down. Uh, Cause we do have some pretty significant overhangs here. Honestly, with everything being tied in in a few dozen places <laughs> um, to this giant pile of dirt, I am not terribly worried. So yeah, next build day, we're just gonna keep on with the rafters. I'm still optimistic uh, of getting this roof pretty well wrapped up by the end of the year, hopefully. We just have, 13 more days. Good morning, everybody. It is, I believe, day seven working on this roof. Uh, I'm excited for today because we're at a point where I kind of know what I'm doing. So now today's project is largely just tacking them up, getting our hurricane ties in. I get confused between ties and straps. These are straps. The little metal brackets are ties. I keep moving on our gabions. Keep moving on our plaster, getting some work done. We got a dead jigsaw. Was uh, had a good run. I think I got this in 2009-ish. But the annoying part is our last beam. We got to cut. It's our last cut. Last one. Just gotta go that far. And it broke. How goes rock moving? Yeah. <laughs> Just the struggle of... <laughs> All right, everybody, it is day seven of this roof build, and it's kind of, yesterday was a little rough. I didn't film a whole lot just because it's kind of figuring some stuff out and kind of screwed up. Uh, you maybe will see right here how our rafters kind of dropped down a little bit, and I just, I wasn't thinking. We gotta, I gotta get up there today and cut those uh, hurricane ties off and then re-level. Uh, you may be able to see right up here, our beam was not actually straight and level and perfect. This is the first time I've done this build, uh, this kind of build uh, with a roof this big. So, you know, this is why we're doing the test house um, so that I can learn on things. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the week, uh, we are 
putting sheeting on. Um, that is the big goal. I want to get this roof done before the end of the year. You can see yesterday, I think I was just tired. We had to really shim this up, so I'm going to be putting some plates to attach all these three together all the way down. This one I just put totally in the wrong spot. This one over here, because we're going to cut these flush, put the wrong plate on, so I had to come back and put an additional plate here. So I got to cut that one off. It's just, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking yesterday, but kind of royally screwed this up. Okay, so this is not ideal at all. Um, but what I'm going to do is cut some shims to come in here and then basically we have these guys. I'm basically just going to triple up on these rafter hangers. I think that should be good. Anyone that's weird, we're just going to hang out the crap out of it. <laughs> Finally moving on to the next step, which is going to be getting all our plum cuts cut. So we're still a little wonky in a few spots, but I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. I uh, got some 2x8 fascia boards, so hopefully that'll kind of even things out, or at least cover up my screw-ups. And I got some very long nails, and then we may still put some shims on some of these boards. And really it's only this end, this very front end that's kind of messed up. The rest looks great, so yeah. Um, it's just the overhang on the front that's kind of wonky, which unfortunately that's the most visible part. But I had these really big overhangs in mind, and then the more I researched it and the more I thought about it, I figured that would be a pretty bad idea actually, because we do get pretty strong winds out here. So cutting these back to just over two feet for the overhangs and Honestly, this thing's so hurricane strapped down that I'm not super worried about it, but I just want to be safe on it. I don't want my roof to fly off because I've seen the winds out here. Wrapping up day seven on this build. These rafters are definitely got a kick in my ass. So <laughs> um, luckily we got them all secure, which is good. Uh, there's still some little like half inch variations in the flatness of it. So I think my plan tomorrow is to cut some shims just to shim those up. Our roofing nails are two inches, so it's overkill um, really but I think even if we have just like some half inch shims on I think it's like six or seven of these boards out of 24 that it's not going to be the end of the world so day seven in the books. Good morning everybody we're on day eight of this roof build. <laughs> It's taking a lot longer than I thought, but I am determined to get roof sheeting up today. Uh, this morning we were working on getting those boards shimmed up again, um, just finishing that out. So that's going to be nice and easy to put the sheeting on, getting everything squared up and ready for sheeting. So moving right along, we got the mixer going, getting some cob up there. Just pushing, just pushing. Two more days to push on this and then a little break for the holidays. So getting as much done as we can. All right, we're moving right along on our back end here, getting those plum cut. Got all the front plum cut, and I think I don't want to be too optimistic, but today is for real, the roof sheeting's going on. <laughs> Wrapping up day eight, and it was another good productive day. You can see we got all of our plum cuts done, which is exciting. Um, so we're ready for fascia board on the all the sides, really. We also got 
the rest of our boards shimmed up uh, where it ended up screwing up. So now our front and back are nice and flat, which is wonderful. All right, everybody, it's day nine on this uh, roof build. We're off to a good start. I already broke a blade. <laughs> so we decided to try and rip down uh, some two by eights uh, to basically split them in half for our fascia board because I did need two by material for our fascia board. And I knew that was a bad idea. We did it anyways and busted a blade. So now we're using two by material. So off to a good start. <laughs> Wrapping up day number nine on this roof build and got our fascia board in. That helped so much on leveling everything out. It's actually looking really, really nice up there. Really nice and flat. Those pipe clamps are able to kind of push stuff up and down just a little bit to get it all kind of leveled out. So I'm not as concerned about putting our sheeting on. Uh, fortunately, we didn't get to that during this big push week but there was some stuff that came up um, fixing the front doing the cob work doing our blocking um, just a couple extra steps that need to get done before we actually uh, put our sheeting up so i'm being good and patient and yeah we're wrapping this up this is gonna be on pause for a little bit uh, through the new year and then we'll get back to it Alrighty, we're back out on another day of this little hyper Adobe house. It's been too long. We've been uh, off for about a week and a half, two weeks now for the holidays. I forget where we're building. So we're getting back to this today. Very excited. Uh, we are starting sheeting, which I've been wanting to do. I wanted to get it done before the holidays. Yeah, that didn't happen. Cranking along today and tomorrow. My goal is to get all the sheeting up and Start moving on to the next step. Get this thing dried in. Very, very, very big day. All right, so we got our first four boards up. This was all just eyeball cut, guessed, and we're within quarter inch. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So four sheets across, and I'm gonna get these tacked in. Helping. 
Hold that for me. Hold it. Terrible helper. Hold the in there for me. There you go. Nope. Alright, we're back out here, another built day on the roof. A little bit under the weather today, but uh, we're gonna keep on push through. So, let's show you guys what we got done yesterday. Got our first three rows of sheeting done, uh, which is really exciting. We've got, I believe, three more to do. So, we're almost halfway. Still need to finish up some of the cob uh, that we're working on. So, this little section here is gonna be to fill out the rest of our gap between the rafters and the bags so we're gonna get that done get some more boards up here another exciting day on the build site All right, first time in, the roof pretty much all the way in. Pretty cool. We are done, sort of with the roof. <laughs> so we got all the sheeting on. I ran out of asphalt paper, so I gotta get some more of that to finish out this. Next steps is getting our skylights in, getting our roofing metal on, getting our windows in, getting our plaster done, and then we are dried in. Super exciting. I think this is the fourth day I've said this, but finally getting the skylights in. <laughs> Finally cutting holes in the ceiling. It's time for me to have the brain power to start cutting holes in a perfectly good roof and let some light in on this place. So I got stuff sort of figured out. I'm gonna have one skylight here. So I need to cut this one. I need to don't cut this one. Cut this one. And then our other skylight is gonna rest up against this. Did not think that it needed to get support material, but I do, so that's unfortunate. But we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna go for it. So this is definitely a struggle in my brain and I don't wanna screw it up. <laughs> so we're going slow and figuring it out. We have light. I still need to put in one support beam on this side, but that's gonna be, have to wait till I get to town. This actually went really well. Um, very nice and clean cut, even with the Sawzall, which was surprising. So I'll come back in and put the flashing and stuff in here. And yeah, now I just gotta get this frame up, which is super heavy and awkward.
That's pretty cool. That was definitely probably the most dumb, difficult way that that could possibly be done. There. So much light. It's a productive day for sure. Section cut out for our second skylight and yeah, just super happy with how stuff is coming along in this house. We're kind of shutting down the season <laughs> here soon, so it's going to be just me solo for the next couple months. But yeah, it's pretty cool to see this place come together and become a home. Uh skylights in sort of I still have to do all the flashing waterproofing yada 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 but they're at least up here and out of the way and yeah second one went way easier than the first I uh, gave myself kind of a little bit of a gap a quarter inch or so and yeah sweet this one will open this one's static I think this is gonna be awesome Welcome back to the Terraform Homestead. It is another beautiful day out here in the desert and we're continuing on the Hyper Adobe build. It's a solo build day today, uh, so our season has pretty well wrapped up. Everyone's escaping southern Arizona before the heat hits, but it's nice out today and, you know, honestly, don't mind the solo build day some days. So we're continuing on with the Hyper Adobe and my goal for today is for sure to get the flashing in for our skylights. This is something that is fairly new to me, so it'll be an interesting mind challenge, but I feel like I've looked up, researched enough, and kind of understand what's going on. First thing I got to do though is secure our ladder. <laughs> so I've got some string. I'm going to screw the ladder into the house itself uh, because when I was building my first house, I had an incident and the ladder fell over while I was on the roof and I got stuck for five hours in the middle of the Texas summer heat and I didn't have my phone on me and didn't want to jump off the roof so uh, yeah that was a learning experience so now that I am solo building out here today I am definitely keeping my phone with me and securing the ladder because I don't want to do that again that was horrible so all right so there we go we are tied in with our ladder again do as I say not as I do often. Um, I have to learn everything the hard way, fortunately, so. I'm gonna get the metal on this one and then kind of deal with some of this mess. So we got our first skylight in and all flashed and stuff. Uh, I also did not have enough of the metal flashing for this one so we're just gonna hold off here until I can get to town next week and then get this one in. I'm also going to get a like little c-channel sort of thing to go across the front of this because safety first and we might as well you know double bag it. Basically what that's gonna do is all the water that comes and hits right here is going to be shot and directed around the skylights because these front corners are going to be our most vulnerable spots. So really there's going to be very, very little water touching there. I'd rather spend the extra 20, 30 bucks just to make sure that this thing never leaks, which will be great. 
coming all around and cleaning up some of our asphalt paper that's kind of blown off and getting in our uh, drip edge. So we've got that ready to go. I'm gonna get that in. Good morning, everybody. It is another build day out on Little Hyper Adobe. So I'm up pretty early today because I'm working on getting our roof on and we are into April now. And so basically every day in the afternoon, we get the winds picking up, but it's usually pretty good in the morning. So I got to get our flashing done on our skylight and then starting to get these up, which is going to be real interesting <laughs> doing these uh, 14 foot panel solo, but you know, it is what it is. We're 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 past the winter season, so uh, the crew has kind of left and yeah, it's up to me to get this stuff done. So. Okay, so the skylights are installed. <laughs> Very exciting. Fortunately, because of course I plan things out, and actually I don't ever, this actually lined up perfectly for the 10 foot panels. So I'm gonna do the 10 foot panels across the bottom, and then we've got 14 foot panels that'll come on top of that, which should work out pretty nicely. We've got our little drip edge protector thing going on here, so, uh, this is sloped just very slightly this way, so that way all the water coming down uh, from above the, the skylights will hopefully get caught on this little piece of C-channel um, drip edge, whatever this is called, and then drain off that way. I'm a child because this is hilarious. <laughs> That sucked. Um, yeah, super sketchy. Uh, trying to get these up here. I think I got three up. I need to just do them one at a time. Take apart our other scaffolding. <laughs> get that stabilized a little bit better because it was definitely wobbling. And then we keep getting these little, uh, not gusts of wind, but any wind on this was slowly scaffolding, kind of sucks. So I got three up, I'm gonna start getting these laid out. Getting started. <laughs> uh, these first couple panels are always the most important to get perfectly lined up, so that way it goes nice and square across. I personally uh, love single slope roofs because there's not a lot you can screw up as far as like, weird eaves and stuff, I guess skylights, but that's why I'm like triple doing everything on this. Uh, but yeah, you can tell the wind's kind of starting to pick up a little bit, uh, such as April in the desert. So I don't know how much farther I'm gonna get. I do wanna get these secured down before I uh, quit for the day, just in case we do get some crazy winds or something like that, but. All right, you got our first road down and it's looking good. I'm pretty happy with this. Getting around the skylight was not as difficult as I thought it was gonna be, which is nice. I still need to come in and put a couple more rows of screws in and get asphalt paper fixed up on this spot. And then we'll get our next row in. The second row, I mean, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to get them up here. <laughs> because they are 14 foot panels instead of uh, 10 foot panels. But at least once they're up here, um, it's pretty easy to just slide them onto the previous row, line up your ends and go for it. So take a break for lunch and come back and knock out the rest of this. Okay, running you guys through kind of what I'm doing here is I come in on either side 
and measure out our uh, screw placement. So kind of measuring from, from the end there and then 18 on center up. Um, we do have a couple extras here um, just because when I'm putting these in, I usually only put in like two screws per panel um, just in case I have to like go back and redo anything at least I haven't screwed down the whole thing so those will be kind of rogue I'm just gonna leave them so once I get them measured out on each side come in with a string line and you can this is technically a chalk line but over this long of a distance it's not gonna do much um, so I'll come in and mark on the ends of each panel and then one in the center so basically I'm skipping every other row and just make a sharpie mark and I know that's where I gotta put my screws so then our screws are nice and straight and beautiful and perfect and wonderful. This has always kind of confused me, but I understand the logic behind it. It just seems weird. Uh, but you always wanna put your screws in on top of the ridge so that way water doesn't get around them. And yeah, we're just gonna keep doing this for the rest of forever. I love building karma, for lack of a better word that I have. This was just all kind of eyeballed. And dead on. Yes, it's gonna look so good. Okay, so I screwed this up. I misremembered how many rolls it took to do this. I thought I did this all in two rolls, so like I would have plenty to do this top third, but I was wrong. <laughs> so I'm almost out of paper. I don't have enough to do this full run in one sheet. I did go scrounge around our workshop and found some old stuff that's been lying around. This one looks promising that it'll get us somewhere. But yeah, I think what I'm gonna try and do is just kind of patch some of these spots here. And then I do have plenty of that uh, asphalt sealant tape. And so I may just seal this seam, whatever I can't do that proper overlap on. Cause I really don't wanna go buy another roll cause town's an hour plus round trip. It's more money, more time, and I want to get the roof on today. So um, we're gonna see how far this goes and just kind of hope for the best. Okay, so I had just enough to get the important parts. This part over here is not over the building at all. So I'm at that little corner over there. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna come in and put some tape on this seam just so water doesn't get under it because I didn't want to buy more. And honestly, it's kind of nice to uh, use up the scraps that we had over in the shop so that they're not in the way anymore. I'm gonna come in with some tape and just fix up a couple of these little spots. I'd like to get at least one or two sheets up just so this doesn't all rip up and off again if we do get some winds. Okay, so got about half of the 14 foot pieces up, got them secured in. We're not supposed to get wind, but you never know out here. <laughs> so I want to get those fairly secured down before I called it a night, but yeah, it's coming along well. I'll get the other panels up first thing tomorrow morning before get any wind like and it, when I say wind it's like the slightest breeze just makes this so difficult pretty excited I've got a couple that I'll need to cut here but those should be pretty easy because they're just straight cuts instead of these weird angle cuts but honestly that wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to be yeah moving right along super excited Good morning, everybody. It is day two of roofing metal <laughs> and didn't realize, I don't know if I just haven't been out working as much or what, but I am sore. I'm very, very sore from uh, climbing up and down the ladder all day yesterday. I think I got like 15 panels up yesterday and only have another like seven more to do. So I'm just gonna try and get those up real quick. Uh, so, yeah, while well, we saw this morning that is nice and not windy, 
and then uh, let's get everything tacked in and uh, move forward on this build uh, today. Yeah, Done. all there is to do is to do it. I got all the panels up. That is the hard part of the day. Now it's just time to tack them down. And luckily on this one, I just have a couple simple cuts to make straight cuts over these skylights and the one cut on the end. So we're gonna get these tacked up and move on. So super excited. We got all the boards up, all the metal up, and now I just got to get it tacked down. The super exciting thing. So I just buy these at the scrapyard. Uh, they're what they call the rainbow panels. So you don't get to choose the color, but I ended up, I was gonna do two sets of 12 foot, but the that would have mixed my colors up. So I ended up doing a set of 10 and a set of 14. Um, so that way I got consistent roofing. Uh, these are a lot cheaper than buying them just at a Home Depot or whatever. Uh, I think they were like $3 a linear foot. But the exciting thing, I asked for 11 of each and they gave me 13, these 14 foot panels. So these 14 foot panels are what at three bucks a foot like 40 bucks a piece so i got an extra 80 bucks worth of free metal so that'll probably end up going on the little tiny house over there when i finally finally get around to redoing that roof but all the hard work's done now it's just going through and screwing all these down and then I may actually have time to get a coat of paint on the fascia board today so that way i can put up the rest of the trim Okay, wrapping up for today. I've still got uh, three more rows. Just ran out of screws, um, as pretty much always happens. So get some more screws next time I go to town and finish this up. Uh, next steps on this is gonna be painting our fascia board to keep it protected and then getting our trim board on the front and the sides. This build is done, <laughs> done with the roof. Super happy with how this turned out. Uh, this has been such a beast of a project. We started on this roof back in mid-December. It is now mid-April, but yeah, we're done. It's exciting.
thank you guys so much for making it this far in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching us put our roof on this build. It has been such a crazy several months. We've been working on this for almost a year and a half now, and it has come such a long way out of basically the dirt from our land, which is really, really cool and exciting. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like button down there, that subscribe button down there. Both of those things go a long way to helping our channel, helping our nonprofit, and keeping you up to date with all the fun builds we're doing out here. We still got a long way to go on this building and we'll be posting videos every week. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't watched our first video on this where we took 200,000 pounds worth of dirt and stacked it in the bags to make the shell of this home, be sure to go check that out. I will have a link right here for that. Thank you guys for watching. Go build something cool.